working on a 2001 Lincoln town car with a misfire complaint. Customer says it runs rough and that check engine light comes on when it does run rough. We asked them if it was flashing, they said no. We were able to take a quick drive and see the problem ourselves, feel it, the light was on, pull back up to the shop, set the car up, and guess what? We found no codes. As a matter of fact, we went into the enhanced powertrain, and when we went into enhanced powertrain and we did the key on and the engine off and so forth, accidentally set one code in the P1464, meaning we had the AC on when we were doing the, the uh, key on engine off test. But there was no other codes besides that. We went into generic as well, and there were no trouble codes in the powertrain there either. And let's look at emissions related codes here. Mode three, no codes. Now, how can this happen? Well, you run into things like this periodically. You know as well as I do, the mill, although it technically stands for malfunction indicator light, can also stand for misery indicator light in some tough drivability problems. So, what we're gonna do is try to turn this into a money indicator light for you, give you some mode six tips on this pre-CAN bus Lincoln. Let's go ahead and go into powertrain and we'll go into mode six from the enhanced side of powertrain, which is always preferable because those parameters will be spelled out, unlike when you go into mode six from the generic side of your tool. So we're in the enhanced side of powertrain. We click on mode six. So as the car is talking to my scan tool and everything, going right into my computer, my laptop, I'm gonna tell you what each of the columns mean and what some of the terminology means. The dollar signs, that's just an indication that we have a hexadecimal numbering system as opposed to a base 10, like most people use. And as we talk about this first column, test ID, that's the general area of OBD2 mode six, like catalytic converter efficiency, EVAP monitor, and so forth. The second column being more specifically drilling down to what aspect of the EVAP is failing or what aspect of the uh, CAT efficiency are we looking at here. And then of course, the result is pass or fail. All the fails will come to the top on any scan tool. So the passes will be at the bottom, the fails come to the top. And then as we go over here to this next column, the minimum of specification, Sometimes there is no minimum or there is no maximum, but there always be one or the other. And then the value here in the middle, what we actually got when we ran that monitor, not what we're looking at now in the bay, not dynamic information, but historic information for when the monitor last ran. And being non-continuous, that could be yesterday, that could be last month. As we go to the next column, that's the max, and finally gives us our units of measurement, pressures, percentages, voltage, whatever. So as we look at this first one and we then click on it, it comes down here in this blue area and defines what we're talking about. Even in a non-color uh, type of monitor, this monochrome uh, OTC, for example, this EVO, it is also going to give you the ability to click enter when you scroll down and you get on one of those mode six test IDs and it will then blossom out and show you what it is you're looking at. In this case, we have EVAP system monitor and what is the dollar sign zero zero? What is specifically are we looking at for EVAP? And we're looking at phase four vapor generation. So these have failed as, as well as this other EVAP test, dollar sign two B and dollar sign zero zero, also EVAP. Here's one for EGR, but guess what? Is the customer complaining about EGR or EVAP? Do we have any codes for either of those? No, customers complain about it running rough. And the light came on when it ran rough. So we're assuming a misfire, we're looking for misfires. So as the old saying goes, if it's not broke, just because it doesn't pass a test, doesn't mean it's broke. If it's not getting a complaint that's germane to what you're working on, you need to overlook a lot of information you'll see in mode six. This is part of the discernment that takes some, a little bit of training and a little bit of experience to wade through. Otherwise it can be a bit frustrating. So remember, if it's not pertinent to your customer's complaint, just weed on past it, make notes of it, record it, so you may need it in the future to explain to your customer, they may have some additional services done later, or to explain these things existed before I fixed your misfire. I click on this last one that failed, and guess what? I've got a misfire monitor, dollar sign 54, 
It's just saying it's bad enough for the cat to be damaged. And some point in time, we kept running this hard and we smelled the sulfur smell from a lot of unburned fuel going into that catalytic converter. We're pretty sure we'd probably damage this catalytic converter. So I'm sure the light would start flashing at some point in time and we'd finally set a code, hopefully. But how can we figure out right now which cylinder it is? If we had the Ford IDS, there's functions in here to tell you what's going on with which cylinder. In the case of other scanners, Mode 6 comes to the rescue. That's why it became familiar to a lot of you technicians when you began, began using Mode 6 is to determine which of the early OBD2 Fords was having the misfire, which cylinder it was. So as we scroll on down to the uh, ones that passed, the ones that passed with flying colors in greens, the ones that were borderline in yellow, as we get on down to another 50 series in those TIDs, test IDs, and we get down to dollar sign 53. We see cylinder number one, TID 01, component 01, I should say, SID 01. That's the specific cylinder. Here we go, cylinder number two, specific cylinder. They're all passing, but guess what? Here's one that budged the needle, if you will. So here on cylinder number five, dollar sign 53 is what's called cylinder specific misfires on Ford pre-CAN bus vehicles. The 02 for the, the actual component ID, SID, is showing a little bit of action. It's halfway between the minimum, which would be zero or nothing. You can't get better than no misfires, so there is no minimum. But the maximum is, let's say, 23%. So in the middle somewhere, we're not at the edge, we'd be in yellow. We're not over the limit, we'd say fail and be in red. We said pass, but we see something going on there. So that gives you an inkling of an idea what's going on with this engine. Are we missing a specific cylinder? I would say cylinder number five, this left bank front hole, that's what I want to look at with my compression gauge, my scope and my meters, check out the coil unplugged, check out the injector, and anything else that can come and go and cause an intermittent misfire.